Mike Byrne from Nerd Talk Radio here. I just wanted to make a video and share some new music that I've been enjoying with you guys. So, let's get started. One three three seven FM Nerd Talk Radio. Listen to this. All right, gonna go through these pretty quick, pretty rapid fire. Starting off. Uh, it's Temples with Volcano. Now, Temples is an English rock band. Uh, this is their second album. I guess the word rock isn't really the right word for them. They're more psychedelic kind of pop, pop rock kind of. You can kind of hear their influences on their sleeve. Like they're very, if you know the band Team and Paula, they're a lot like them, but way more kind of happy and poppy and this album is no exception it's really kind of cheerful and playful and it just has kind of like a cool fantasy pop rock vibe to it japan droids near to the wild heart of life japan droids is a canadian rock band consisting of only two members brian king on guitar and vocals and david prouse on drum and vocals now i only heard about this band just last year actually i heard some of their stuff on the cbc radio too i think they kind of play a little bit of uh, more indie scene Canadian music. And I heard these guys on there, and I thought they were, you know, they got a pretty good kind of like lo-fi. Like I said, there's only two of the members, there's drummer and guitar. Kind of a lo-fi pop punk indie rock kind of feel to the sound. In this album, they kind of switch it up a little bit, and they have a few more influences, like kind of goes to Neil Young and almost some places like kind of the Southern Rock. Not their best record, but it is a pretty good album and it has a lot of good songs on it and it's definitely worth checking out. Shoo Shoo Forget. Now this album kind of just blew me away, but I couldn't expect any less from Shoo Shoo. Uh, last year I really enjoyed their cover album of the entire Twin Peaks soundtrack. This album is all original material this year and it Definitely kind of goes back to the original Shoo Shoo vibe from years back. Because Shoo Shoo started out with this kind of distorted new wave sound. And they kind of got more noisy and more kind of haunting and creepy and experimental and just weird. Now to say that this album is poppy is not, it's going to be a top 40 hit or anything like that. Like it's still really strange and really experimental. So if you want to try listening to something that's kind of out there but also slightly accessible... Uh, totally check out the Shushu album, but be warned, like, Jamie Stewart, the creative force behind Shushu, has a unique singing style, which may take a bit of getting used to. Just as a warning going in, this album will creep you out. It is very haunting and unsettling, like all of Shushu's music, really. And The Flaming Lips came out with a new album this year as well. Oxy Melody, Oxy, Oxy Melody. Again, Flaming Lips, psychedelic, pop rock, kind of, who came up in the grunge years of the 90s and slowly transformed more electronic, more experimental, more psychedelic. And this album is definitely continuing the trend that they set from their last full length, the Terror. It's almost got some like trap influenced hip hop beats behind it and there's these long long looped drum fills and these luscious synths that are beautiful in a way and this one also has that kind of shoo shoo vibe of just being unsettling and creepy but it works towards its benefit definitely not the strongest output the flame lips have ever done uh but it's definitely worth checking out if you are into this kind of thing king gizzard and the lizard wizard a psychedelic rock band. I don't know why I've kind of only listened to a lot of psychedelic stuff this year, but I mean, a lot of good stuff has been coming out in that genre. And King Gizzard is no exception. Australian band, this new album, <laughs> Flying Microtonal Banana, is, I think the band said this is going to be one of five full-length albums they're putting out this year alone, which isn't surprising considering this band's put out 
seven or eight albums since 2012 they just have this crazy amount of work out there and they're just able to pump out things and not pump out bad things like everything they put out is amazing and it's just so temples and flaming lips were more electronic and poppy and king gizzard and lizard wizard is definitely rooted in 60s guitar heavy psychedelic rock and if you're looking for a kind of a throwback experimental rock and album then totally check out this one the jesus and mary chain damage and joy uh so this band was kind of well they were around since i think the mid 80s and they kind of had their big break you know through the 90s grunge alternative rock scene they never became like a pearl jammer or nirvana or anything like that they had their following they were there for so long uh i believe it was 98 they kind of disbanded so 98 was the last album they put out and they're kind of coming back together for this album here. I was not a big fan of these guys before. Not that I wasn't a big fan. I just never got into their music. Not a fan, really. Nothing wrong with their music. Just not really my cup of tea. I'm only pointing it out here because if you were a fan of these guys before, you should probably check out this album because it is the first album they've had out since 1998 when they kind of broke up. I guess check it out. I mean, it sounds super 90s. It sounds like if you're only into like 90s alternative rock and you just wish Oh, back in my day, music used to be so good, and why can't they just make music like they used to? I mean, this is almost a time capsule. It's a 90s album that didn't happen in the 90s. It's happening now in 2017. So check it out if that's kind of what you're into. And moving on from there, we have The Shins with Heartworms. Yeah, The Shins. Hmm, still making music. Uh, this album's not bad. It's definitely no shoots to an arrow or, or inverted world. It's... Like every Shins album, is kind of just a different style of music, kind of. I mean, the Shins is just basically James Mercer, the project, the band. You know, he's the lead songwriter, lead singer, lead guitar player. It's his kind of pet project, and he kind of rotates his uh, bandmates accordingly. Like, he'll just randomly fire every member in his band and just get a new band for a new record to try a new sound and things which kind of shows because you jump from record to record to record in the shins discography and you're gonna get a lot of different things and with this one it really feels more poppy kind of kooky and goofy like they're kind of going for that of montreal or just one of these other quirky indie bands of the late 2010s so they don't really sound like the shins oh there's a couple moments on this that they kind of do hark back to their older style and i mean yeah change is good change is fine the band should just you know i'm all for jumping around and changing style and doing something different so yeah if you're looking for something kind of light and fun totally check this one out and now the complete opposite of light and fun and accessible here's sun kill moon with common as light and love are red valleys of blood uh yeah so this is pretty interesting uh sun kill moon is just the american folk rock music project fronted by mark kolasek i think this is the third sun kill moon album he's had other projects before he's in other bands and stuff like that but this is the third in almost like a trilogy of records he's been putting out each record kind of seems to get longer and stranger and it's definitely not accessible pop music but i mean not all music needs to be like that and this certainly is something uh it's a double album so <laughs> over two hours of music where mark will go sometimes five minutes two minutes seven minutes 12 minutes long with these songs um the whole album is kind of like a musical version of his journal from last year it seems like you can tell he's reading off of notes because he has specific dates and events and details and he's almost it's not spoken word although some parts are definitely spoken word with some instrumentals behind and there's definitely a strong narrative and it goes through basically a year in his life which is a pretty cool concept for an album and if you're going in with a open mind and you have you know two hours to sit down and listen to kind of this man sit down with an acoustic guitar and a drum beat in the back and kind of tell you the story you'll have a pretty good time with this record thundercat drunk oh man this wow so thundercat aka steven bruner is a pretty well-known and famous bass player multi-instrumentalist but primarily bass player uh songwriter who 
collaborates with different groups and different artists. He works with a lot of hip hop people. He's lo- known for working with Kendrick Lamar recently for a lot of his records. Like he's prolific as like a studio bassist and just having this cool retro 70s soul funk feeling to him. And he's just an amazing bass player and a pretty good songwriter and singer. And this album, I can't remember the number of the tracks. There's at least like 16 or 17. Is that at only 40 minutes? There's a lot of tracks on here. A lot of them are kind of short. Thundercat just has a lot of humor and quirkiness to it. So if you're into like kind of this retro soul R&B feel with like a lot of jazz infused bass and drum playing with a lot of quirky lyrics. Uh, there's one song on this album called Tokyo where it's basically like a Thundercat's weeaboo confessional where he talks about how awesome it is to go to Tokyo and he loves to spend all his money on fish and anime and he went there when he was a kid and someone bought him a Goku wristband and there's a pretty funny line in this where he kind of like screams prophetically at the sky, Goku ruined me. It's a, it's definitely worth a listen. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and lastly on this list of music to check out, uh, Mastodon has just put out a new album, Emperor of Sand. Now, uh, Mastodon, you know, American rock sludge, progressive metal band. Stepping outside of their wheelhouse a little bit on this one. Definitely getting more... I don't want to use the word mainstream, but definitely more kind of pop metal Uh They're not as aggressive as they used to be on things like Leviathan or Blood Mountain, but the narrative behind this album is that there's someone who's been like exiled to wander a desert until death, and at the end of the album he does reach his death, and it tells this whole like grand epic tale, and the band is really open about this, that it's all like a metaphor for... I think two or three of the members of the band just recently had family members who were either diagnosed or passed away due to cancer. So it's all about them dealing with the grief and the loss and the getting older and dealing with all these emotions and things. Like This is how the band usually deals with their personal things. They kind of extrapolate it and put it into a fantastical, fictional setting. And it really comes across their music and it's definitely worth checking out and worth being into. I mean, everybody loves Mastodon. I love Mastodon. My dog loves Mastodon. Simba, what is this? Mastodon! So yeah, that's it for this uh, little video here. I think I might continue to do this. This was kind of like the first quarter of the year I wanted to go through here, just from January to March, like the first three months. So I think come uh, July, I'll come out. Maybe I'll do another video similar to this. You know, if you like it, like and subscribe to the channel. Just maybe start a little discussion in the comments. Let me know if what you thought of these albums, if you have listened to them. And I'll put links to the songs, some song and stuff, like in the description below, so you can click on them. And, you know, check them out for yourself, and let me know how you, what you thought of these these songs and these bands, and like if you've never heard of Shoo Shoo or if you've never heard of Mastodon or Thundercat, like let me know. Maybe I turned you on to like your new favorite band or something like that. Just let me know. Or if there's an album that did come out in you know January, March that I didn't mention here that you thought was awesome or really cool or worth mentioning, put it in the comments and just uh, you know share it with everybody. Tell me about it. I would love to check it out. So that's it. 